Hey everyone. Today I've got a Elan Systems Z-Series power conditioner slash surge protector. I picked this up just recently on eBay as a non-working unit. The fact that it was non-working kind of caught my interest because there's really not much to these. It's basically a simple surge protector, common mode choke, and then some logic inside just to control the switched outlets and things like this. This unit I'm actually pretty familiar with. Uh, when I used to work at a company that installed home theater systems, we used these a lot, both for home theater home automation. They're nice little power conditioners with the uh, switched outlets in the back so you can sequence your equipment up in order so that you know if you have power amps you can turn those on after the fact of your preamps or vice versa so you don't get power on dumps and things like this. The back of it's pretty simple. It's just a layer of different outlets, some fully on, some switched, and then delayed switch two which are adjustable via some switches on this thing which is I'm actually going to talk about those here shortly because based on the description of this unit one of the complaints was is that the switch outlets weren't working. Now there's really not much to these things, some really simple logic inside besides the main power conditioning components of this. So I figured worst case, even if the, the logic was fried, I could just bypass it and use it as a simple, you know, nice surge protector slash common mode choke for noise filtering for some equipment that I want to run off of it. Now I haven't powered this guy up yet. I'm going to do that here in a few minutes to test to see if we're actually getting power in the output. I'll do that after we open it up. But the description stated that the switched outlets and the delayed outputs weren't working correctly. That is, there was no power coming out of them, which was kind of odd. Now, I'm familiar with the device because I've used them in the past, but anyone that would just read the manual on it would realize that on the front here, behind this plastic strip, there's actually a set of dip switches right here that are used to configure and uh, control the different parameters of this device as far as the serial communication on the back, delayed startup times, uh, delayed sequences, things like this. My guess is that these switches are probably just set incorrectly because it was used in some type of home automation system and uh, it probably just needs to be reset to factory defaults to make it work. So the only downside I don't like about it is that you know you have this nice looking device on the front here with the plastic strip and peeling this back over time it kind of causes some kinks and things like that but not a big deal. No user serviceable parts. I always love it when things say that. It makes me laugh. Alright, so I've got all the screws removed. I just wanted to pop the cover off and take a look inside before I powered it up. Just verify that visually anything to make sure that nothing's actually blown or damaged inside here. So, taking a look inside, it's uh, pretty simple as expected, uh, at least from the, the filtering side. So, you've got a handful of uh, MOVs here on the input along with a nice fuse. There's actually, it feeds through a 15 amp circuit breaker right here in the front uh, through the manual power switch as well. And then through the fuse, you got a, like I said, a handful of MOVs. You got a nice big common mode choke, um, some filtering capacitors as well. Looks like there's some more MOVs on the output there. And then, let's see, it looks like a couple outputs. One going to the fixed outlets, which I believe are over here. These are the always on outlets. And then we got two nice big, it looks like two relays here running the other two outputs for the switched um, outlets that basically are powered on when the power switch is on. And also the delayed outputs, which is this last relay here, which it's tied to some of the logic um, that drives this from the front as far as what the switches are set to. And that's an adjustable delay. You can adjust that from 6 to 20 seconds or something like this, I believe, to, to power up your equipment in sequence, essentially. On the back here, there's another little daughter board. This has actually got the, looks like the surge protection for the phone lines right here in this little section. And then there's a relay, an opto-isolator, looks like, for the actual... There's a couple of communication protocols on here. It looks like uh, simple serial communication. There's also a relay switched output for turn on equipment. And then, <laughs> it's kind of funny. You got a, here's your coax surge protector here, which is just an off-the-shelf Wrigley unit that's kind of screwed in the back. It's kind of funny because these two things are basically obsolete on the back there. I mean, I suppose the cable is still applicable if you have a cable modem or, or cable TV still, but I don't, so I don't have any use for either one of those. All right, since everything looks good inside, nothing looks visibly blown anywhere, I'm going ahead and power this guy up. I've got three meters hooked up right now to the outputs. Uh, the far right I've got on the outputs are supposed to be always on, which interestingly they're not, but makes sense because everything is actually switched through that front power switch. So as long as the device is on, those outputs will be on. Then the second two banks, I've got the delayed outputs for the, the four there in the middle. That's the second meter, the middle meter. And then the far left meter I've got on the actual delayed outputs. So we'll go ahead and power this on. Got a red light in the front. Heard a relay click. So you got 120 volts on the always on output. 
but I'm not getting anything on the two other switched outputs. So wait a few seconds here. Like I said, the longest delay setting on this thing is 20 seconds or so. But I don't think I'm going to get anything. If I recall, there's a couple of LEDs in the front panel. Green ones are supposed to light up as well, indicating that this guy is actually operating correctly. So it's been at least 20 seconds. I'm saying that's a no as far as the settings there. So let me uh, take a look at the switches again. So before I go searching for the manual, from memory I remember all the switches in this guy having to be in the up position for this to be in the default settings. Uh, up on this is on for all the different dip switches on there. So this number three switch here is actually down. I'm going to turn it up. I'm going to power this thing back up and see what happens. All right, now I'm going to try to power it back up again. So power switch on. Relay clicks. Okay, now we got 120 volts on both the the always on outlets and delayed outputs. And then also now, just I heard that relay, last relay click, we got 120 volts on the delayed output too. So that might have been all the problem was, depending the fact I don't see anything actually visually wrong with this. I'll take a slightly closer look at the electronics just to verify, but my gut feeling when I saw the auction was that there was nothing actually wrong with this. And from what I'm seeing now, it kind of proves my initial theory. I wanted to take a little bit closer look at the input protection, surge protection, and common mode choke section of the circuitry on this Elan Z series product. So you got three nice connectors here right in the board, which I really like. It makes it a lot easier to service. Um, if I needed to take this board out, I could easily remove these three connectors there, which is pretty good. It gives you a nice solid connection between the, the primary wires coming in off the AC from the AC mains into the actual board here. There's a nice ceramic fuse right on the input, which is really nice because there's also a 15 amp circuit breaker on the front here. Looking at the MOV uh, surge protection here, it's actually kind of nice. They have a fuse in between, they've got two MOVs in series between ground and neutral, ground and hot, and they actually have a fuse in series with each of those as well, which is really a nice way of doing it because th what these things do wear out over time is they take surges. A lot of times they'll either fail open or they can actually short out, and in that case you're, you're you blow the breaker, blow the fuse in this point, but if you can just take out your local fuse here instead of taking out the main fuse, um, it's definitely a nice feature. Moving on, like I said, we have this huge common mode choke, which is pretty cool. I'll probably have to pull up the data sheet on that. I've never seen one quite looking like that before, which is kind of neat. There's capacitor filtering on the input here as long as the output. And then there's also three more mobs over on this side on the output circuitry from the common mode choke, which is kind of interesting. Now one thing I wish they would have continued that they started on the input with the nice connectors over here would be to use those nice connectors on the on the output here, which uh, by output I mean the, the wires that go to basically the, the outlets on the back of the unit. So here, it, they, you can see they've actually got the board layout ready for the same type of connectors they used on the input. They just chose to solder the wires directly into the board, which is fine, but it just makes servicing this a little bit more tedious because you can't pull this whole board out then. You know, these are hardwired into all the jacks back there, so you have to leave it in the unit while it kind of flops around. And if, if you did have to work on this and replace something. That being said, I'll probably go through and replace all the mobs on here as just a precaution. I know I have spare ones in stock that are brand new. And like I said, this is an older unit. I see a date code here of 2000, so roughly 16 years old now, at least from when it was built. It could have been used barely at all, but it's really hard to tell. So as a precaution, I'll probably just go through and replace all those anyway, just because I know I have them now and I'm not using them. Moving over a little bit, you can see the date code here, Elan Home Systems, copyright 2000. The two relays here I was actually kind of interested in because they're actually pretty nice relays. Looks like they have some pretty high quality contacts on them. They're a decent size. When they were energized, they clicked really nicely. I didn't see any visible spark or anything like that. I'll have to see what this device looks like under load when there is actually something attached to those outlets. This unit isn't really a super high power unit. It's rated 15 amps max. That's what the the breaker is rated on on the front of it, and that's what it says on the back and the label anyway. But you wouldn't want to run any super high power amplifiers or anything through this just because you know the the current maximum current capability on this is 15 amps so you derate that by 80 percent and you're, you're not moving a whole lot of power through this guy looking at this cover i actually think i'm going to put it on upside down both sides are powder coated the same but since this side faced in it's pristine no scratches or any nicks on it unlike the side that is facing you know outwards that that has been all scratched up so 
I will do that, make it look a little bit newer. Also a neat little trick for anyone that's got scratches or scuff marks on a device like this on the front, any type of black equipment, especially anything of aluminum where the powder coating or paint is rubbed off on it. If you take a black Sharpie and just kind of touch it up, just in the areas that's nicked up, as it dries, it won't be perfect, but it'll look significantly better than it did all scratched up. So that's it. I'm going to replace those mobs and screw it back together. And besides that, it's good to go. I'm going to use this and I've got a small stereo cabinet that's got a couple components, nothing high power, but just as a simple surge protector slash power strip, basically. I hate the plastic little surge protectors, power strips things. Those things are garbage. I like having a nice quality rack mount unit like this guy that even though it doesn't have the rack ears, the entire chassis is steel. It's well built. It has high quality plugs in the back of it. It's got decent EMI filtering and it'll it'll work great for my purposes, especially for being nothing wrong with it and getting it for $10. All right, thanks for watching.